Hi neighbor, I'm Connor Gant. On today's episode, we find out firsthand what it takes to become a lacrosse player. Also, have you ever wanted to eat a disturbingly large amount of pancakes for a good cause? Because I have just the event for you. Later, discover the amazing world of contra dancing and the community it has fostered here in Boone. I hope you'll join me as we say, hi neighbor. Lacrosse is considered one of the most physical sports out there, and along to being tough, you've got to be skilled. Here with me today to talk about the rewards and challenges of lacrosse is Connor from the App State Women's Lacrosse Team. How are you doing? Hi, Connor. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So could you tell us uh, kind of what the game of lacrosse is about? Well, the ultimate goal is to score as many goals as you possibly can. You try to do it quickly and with as much tactical skill as possible. Very cool. So. What position do you play specifically? I play defense, sometimes midfield, if okay. needed. So how long have you been playing lacrosse? Uh, about nine years, I think. Okay. And what, at the time, what really got you into it? Well, it was a growing sport in the area where I'm from. A lot of guys' teams were popping up, but um, girls' sports were gaining traction too. So I was one of the first few players in the area. Very cool. So can you tell us a little bit about the men's and women's programs here at App State? and where you guys practice? And well, uh, practices take place at all of the various sports areas. We have state farm fields usually in the fall, and then we've been practicing at Kidbrew Stadium this season. So, yeah, and then I don't know too much about the guys' mm -hmm. team, but they practice generally at the same time we do in the okay, fall. Okay, so when you guys play, uh, do you guys play at the schools? Yes, yes we do. We play, we're a club level team, mm -hmm. so none of us are on scholarship here but we play other schools' uh, club teams as well, so. That's very cool. So um, for someone who's interested in joining, how could they go about that? Well, at the beginning of every semester, we have interest meetings, so just show up to one of those, and then it, we take people of all levels, beginners, experienced people, doesn't matter, you're all welcome. Well, I'm not sure if I'm ready to join the lacrosse team, <laughs> but thank you very much for coming and joining us today, and Thanks. let us know a little bit about lacrosse. Thank you. Stick around because coming up next, we learn to make some pancakes for a good cause. Morning, Gary. We are GetSchooled.com. You want a college education, don't you? You know you do. Uh, yeah, but I don't know where to start. That's why we're here. We're free, handsome, oh, I think we're breathtaking. And here to guide you through every step of the way, starting with attendance. Gary, financial aid forms. Biology homework, G. I got this. <coughs> Is that brand? <laughs> Colleges love extracurricular activities. Well, that chess really isn't my thing. I got this. Doesn't matter. Picking a college, man. You and us we go together like tacos and Tuesday. And I love tacos. Fire and ice. Those don't really go together. Go to GetSchooled.com for more info. Here with me today is Abby, the philanthropy chair of Kappa Delta, to tell me more about the slam dunk shamrock pancake dinner. How are you doing today, Abby? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. So tell us a little bit about what pancake dinner is and when it is. Yeah, um, so this year it's held on March 3rd and um, it's the biggest philanthropy Greek event on campus. Um, and so we're trying to raise as much money as possible and 80% of the proceeds go to the Children's Council of Watauga County and 20% go to Prevent Child Abuse America. Very cool, so that's awesome. And now I, I would love to help out. Yeah. I can't cook, but we have a fantastic pancake recipe we're gonna make right here real quick. Sounds so great. it's fun and it's simple and it's not that bisquick stuff you can just whip up at home. So first of all, some of the ingredients are, you'll need flour and sugar, baking powder, eggs, um, butter, which we have right here, and some milk. Okay, so first of all, we wanted to prepare like our wet and dry mixes separately. So I'm gonna give you a bowl. And if you wanna make the dry stuff, Great. I can work on making the wet stuff, cool. So we have some measuring cups. Perfect. And a spoon. 
and a spatula, which we don't think we need right now. So first of all, we're going to add two cups of flour. So there's your flour. This is a cup right here. Yeah. Perfect. So two of those. Okay. Um, three tablespoons of sugar, which we have right here, which I'll work on doing that. So how much money did you guys raise last year? Last year we raised a little bit over 15,000. Um, and so this year our goal is 16,000. Wow, very cool. So the next thing we need is one tablespoon of baking powder, which we have right here. Okay. I'll let you do that. And sure. in my bowl, I'm gonna mix um, a quarter cup of, one and a quarter cup of milk. So. So next we have two eggs, and I'll let you know you're pretty good at cracking eggs. I'm pretty good at cracking okay, eggs. Okay, I'll let you do that. Okay. I will make a mess everywhere. <laughs> so I'll give you those. And then we need a third of a cup of butter, which this okay. butter is already pre measured, I think. Are you putting it in this cool. bowl? The yeah. eggs? Yeah. Okay. So I don't think we have a knife, but this is about where this spatula is going to come in handy. So shamrock, why do y'all call it the shamrock pancake dinner? Well, it is around St. Patrick's Day, and um, shamrock is specific to Cafe Delta's everywhere. Um, but we started doing our pancake dinner 25 years ago. Um, oh, wow. And different schools have different shamrock events. If you want to stir that up with this. Sure. I'll try to stir this up over here. <laughs> so how many years have you guys been making pancakes? Um, we've actually been doing it for 25 years, um, and we started out of McDonald's, so it's come oh. a really long way. That's awesome. So last year, it sounds like you guys had a lot of people there if you made $15,000. Definitely. Um, we always have a great turnout, and um, this year we're hoping for as many people as possible, and um, the basketball team is going to be there for oh, yeah. um, nice. the slam dunk effect. So they're going to be like, do any cool dunks? Yeah. Yeah? Very cool. So if we want to mix these together, okay. I think. <laughs> um, you can stir that. So if you can tell us, we have a couple seconds left here. Sure. People who are interested and want to come to Pancake Dinner, when is it? It's March 3rd from 5 to 9 in Central Dining Hall. OK, so how can you buy tickets? You can get a ticket from any um, of the Katie sisters on campus. We have contact tables in the student union um, every day leading up to pancake dinner from 11 till 3. Very cool. Or you can get them for $7 at the door. Nice. So Abby, before we go, I'm going to show our viewers that we have a nice, it's our pancake mix. I don't know if you guys can see it right there. But, and then this is the finished product. Unfortunately, they won't let me cook. But. Oh. Here's the finished product. Abby, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. We'll have more High Neighbor coming up after the break. Look at you. You're at the top of your game. You're unstoppable. Nothing can throw you off track. Wait, is that your car? Uh-oh. Yeah, I saw that coming. That will throw you off track. You're looking at around 10 grand in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Let's try this again. Smart move. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Welcome back, neighbor. With me today is Robin Hale, organizer of the local, con local contra dancing events. Robin, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, thank you. Thanks for coming. So could you tell us a little bit about what contra dancing is? get this question a lot. Contra dancing's a partnered line dance, mm -hmm. uh, which means that you have another partner that you're dancing with, but you're in long lines with a lot of other partners, okay. a lot of other couples. And you go down the line and you get to dance with every other couple uh, throughout the time. It's a social dance, which means it's not something you would do with your um, for romantic night out, because you change partners so, right. so often. You get to meet everybody. So for someone who's like trying to learn contra dancing, is it like pretty easy to pick up? Absolutely. Um, 
before every dance, we have a 30-minute lesson. Oh, that's convenient. Um, so for beginners, and I went to several beginner lessons before I stopped going to those. And then before every dance, throughout the evening, there's someone who's telling you exactly what to do and teaches every dance every 15 minutes. So. That's perfect for those of us who are not graced with uh, dancing skills. <laughs> <laughs> so what's it like being in a contra dance? Like what, it, what brings you, what it makes it mean something to you? It's just the best time. Uh, we have over 100 people come out to our dances pretty regularly. And at our last dance, we had people from the ages of five up to in their 80s. And everyone's together. It's this great community of people all smiling and laughing and having a great time together. That's awesome. So do you have many like App State students that come and we, join you? We do have a lot of App State students who come. They're a good part of our community. Um, but we also have a lot of community members. I would say it's over half App State students at this point. In the summer times, we'll have a few more tourists coming through and people traveling throughout the area. Well, that's awesome. So um, I've been told that during this commercial break, you were going to teach me some contra dance moves. I am. So coming up after the break, we'll see if I can contra dance. Stick with us. When I was six, I had one thing on my mind. When I was six, my days were spent playing basketball every chance I could. When I was six, my dream was to make it to the NBA. When I was six, my mom had a stroke. I'm Paul George, and I want you to learn the signs of a stroke fast. F-A-S-T. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. Because the sooner they get to the hospital, the sooner they'll get treatment. And that can make a remarkable difference in their recovery. Protect the ones you love. Spot a stroke. F A S T. Fast. Hi, neighbor. Thanks for coming back. Robin is going to teach me some contra dancing. Robin? Are you ready for let's this? Let's do this. Okay. So the first rule when you're learning how to contra dance mm -hmm. is to smile. If you're having fun, then you're doing it right. Absolutely. Uh, right. There's some moves in contra dancing that are, you may have heard of before. Okay. So the first one I'm going to teach you is called the do -si do You've probably heard that um, okay. in a different context, perhaps. Right. So for this one, if you can imagine a circle on the floor. Okay. Um, you're just going to walk around. We're going to walk around each other, kind okay. of orbiting. And the whole time, you're just going to face that wall. Perfect. We're going to pass back to back and come back to where we started. Okay. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay. okay. Good. Yeah. So okay. that's a do -si do Cool. Um, the moves get more complicated than that. Mm -hmm. So if you want to do that again, I'll kind of demonstrate some flourishes that can be added onto it. OK. So let's try that again. Ah, it's fancy. Yeah. Nice. So the premise is circles okay. and walking. Most people, Easy enough. Most people know what circles are, and most people can walk. So yeah. we're in good shape. Okay. Another move that we'll do is called an alamand. OK. So if you pull against my hand a little bit, and we'll just walk around each other. OK. And if you keep on contact, it's quite nice. Right. Um, it helps from getting dizzy as well, because when you do a lot of circles, it can yeah, get quite dizzy. Yeah, I can see people getting dizzy quick. Yeah. Very cool. Thank you for joining us, Robin. Mm -hmm. So before we finish today's show, um, When's the next Contra Dance, and how can people get involved? So our next Contra Dance is tomorrow night, February 25th. It's okay. at the Old Cove Creek School Gym. So it's about 15 minutes away from downtown Boone. And it starts at 6.30 with a lesson. OK. And then the dance is from 7 to 10 o'clock. Right, we have a website, The Boone Country Dancers. OK. And we're also on Facebook, The Boone Contra Dancers. Very cool. So and it's live music, too. We were talking. Yeah. That makes things like 10 times better. It's wonderful. We have great musicians that travel from around the region to come and play for us. OK. Very cool. Well, Robin, thank you so much for joining us. I hope you, today's episode encourages you to make some pancakes, learn to dance, and play a new sport. Be sure to check our Facebook page and Twitter, AppTVHN, for interview segments and extras. Until next time, I'm Connor Gant. Bye, neighbor.